John Connor. Come with me if you want to build. Um, eh, no, not a bad Arnold Schwarzenegger imitation. But it, this this needs to go down into the uh, dude construction area because it is time. <laughs> Uh, um, uh, 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 Terminator aside, it is time. The audience is now deaf. Alright, this thing is kind of taking over. Um, obviously there's some stuff that's going to be for the build, and there's other stuff that's not going to be for the build. Case in point... Let's just pop the top here and get real specific. Um, you guys know I've always been one of those people that I just tend to hide my uh, my shipping info. I, I just it's just one of those habitual things I've always done. Call it paranoia, call it perfect awareness. But um, this was literally the very very last thing to kind of mess me. You know what? I'm not going to show it to you. The very very last thing to mess me up in the build is acquiring this one because the USPS was so jacked up from all the shipping stuff. So. <laughs> Uh, this this guy can wait. Uh, as opposed to me just breaking this thing down on, on, on camera. G just give me a minute, okay? There'll be another segment coming up, and stand by. All right, now, charitably, you guys do know I tend to utilize the uh, rule of two. One is good, two is better. Never fails to have a backup. You probably want to have a backup. Uh, comprising the build of the what would stoner do, the way that the Forgotten Weapon guys did it, is they said, okay, we're going to use the lightest possible barrel, we're going to use carbon fiber four ends, and that stuff really tends to just get really fakaka duty expensive really, really quick. Uh, I went online and I did some scouting around on one of my favorite websites, also known as uh, Gunbroker. So anyway, uh, Gun Gunbroker happened to have a um, Chineseium... Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be nice in this regard. Now, this is basically just mocked up right now, so this is not the final build. Obviously, I'm going to go through the build with you guys, and we'll go from there. Uh, but anyway, what this is, this is a 16-inch, quote-unquote, air quotes, uh, carbon fiber. It's more like it's it's hydro-printed polymer. So it is maybe just a little bit flexy. Uh, I've seen the reviews online. People tend to get these things actually you know, pretty decent write-ups. They say that they're actually... Not too terrible bad. And you can see it actually does have this really kind of, let me zoom in on it, this really kind of zoomy, zoomy, this really kind of fake, not quite real. <laughs> it's it's hydro printed, okay? It is, that is not carbon fiber, guys. But anyway, uh, so what I did here is I basically got this thing mocked up. Now, um, this is a standard, uh, not crazy, I think this might actually be an Anderson Obviously, I have to do final assembly on it, you know, put in the uh, Ford Assist, put on the dust cover, all the rest of that stuff. But I do actually have some go-fast parts in there as it stands. So let's just go with that one. Of course, I did already put the uh, the, the Yankee Hill, I believe that's a Yankee Hill, uh, extended release, because I really, really like these things. You can one-hand these things pretty good, on the, uh, the charging handle. Now, the Bolt carrier is, yes... No, it has not been attacked by mice, folks, okay? It, it's it's basically been a lightened bolt carrier. So it's been uh, some mass removed as opposed to your standard bolt carrier. And it's probably lost about maybe three, four ounces. You know, it, it's kind of charitable to say it's really had a huge weight savings. Obviously, I do have a bolt in there. Obviously, I do have the cam pin in there. Obviously, I do have the firing pin in there. Obviously, I do have the, uh, the keeper slash cotter pin in there. So that's all together. The uh, charging handle is basically just a standard generic, nothing crazy, uh, like fairly cheap. I found it, you know, of course, before ammo apocalypse and, you know, parts apocalypse ascended upon all of us, uh, or descended. And uh, it's basically just a Yankee Hill extended release, which I really, truly love because you can one-hand these things, and it's not oppressively huge and get in your way. I'm not big on the two-sided guys. I'm not a lefty. I don't need that type of stuff. So do have a charging handle. That's good to go as well. So those parts right there have already shaved a few ounces. Now, uh, the rest of the upper here, uh, I'm not going to show you what's inside the uh, <clears throat> the Chineseium handguard, but let's just say that it would be approved by the uh, what would Stoner do guys over on Forgotten Weapons. So 
here we have the basic components they're in and obviously there is going to be some further bolt-on parts okay don't, don't even worry about that one so that is at an instance and it's extant the upper well obviously not having you know scoping or anything on there but that's pretty much basically it oh you, you say i need more parts <sighs> there is that one okay so uh, obviously you know i could go with this you know strike industries i think it is uh, you know, the basically the, the, the clip-in guy, I have found these are... Yeah, they're that. They're, they're absolutely that. They do not inspire confidence, so I will not utilize that and put it in my stuff. Oh, okay, okay. I know I'm getting the butt dude, butt dudes, all right? So here you go. Forward assist, dust cover. Bing. A la Marine Corps style, just throw it in the field of view and say, That's your stuff! <laughs> Remember that rule or two I mentioned to you guys a little while ago? Yeah. So I basically got myself a second upper here. Uh, this guy is going to be a... Oh, what was this guy? Del this is a Delton. This is a Delton upper, standard 16. And they, they refer to it as a lightweight, but it's really kind of funny because you look at a really kind of thin profile barrel a la... M16A1, so fairly thin profile, and I do mean carbine, but it steps up to 750, so it's not a 625 gas block for, you know, forward sight base, whatever you wish to call it, and it doesn't really have a true skinny profile all the way in the back. It, it, it just it just doesn't, okay? That's not even exactly correct, but you know what? I got into it for cash. Mm, yeah, and of course, obviously, I did put one of these lightweight bolt carriers in this upper so it is not very very heavy and yes it did get the yankee hill you know extended uh, release on the uh the charging handle i just like those okay i did obviously take off the bird cage i took off the bird cage you know crush washer uh this was tight man this thing was really really tight and how did i get it off well i probably should have some tools shouldn't i yeah, uh, let me get this out of the field of view because this is not a component of this build, but it was just kind of cool to show off. Delton, good stuff. All right, there's also the other components that, well, um, I got a pile off to the side here. You guys aren't going to see that until it comes time to do the lower componentry. All right, so anyway, we're looking at the upper and uh, we're still doing the mock-up phase. And I went on eBay and the amount of fake stuff <sighs> or quote unquote airsoft quality is right on out there. So case in point, I have a copy and I'm do saying very charitably, I am do saying very charitably. It is a copy of a Knight's Armament uh SR25 uh was it S SR one ten or something that basically their their scope base. This is not their scope base, okay? It is most definitely a copy. Uh, it looks, even though it's made out of Chineseium, that it's going to be, eh, I'm going to use it as a mock-up. It's actually a little heavier than I would like. So, that's probably not going to go on there for the actual build, per se. But the thing about it is, is all these mounts and, you know, other things that are floating around, you get variety, you can see which fits, what actually, you know, has the right eye box for you. And uh, speaking of eye box, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I kind of went just a little bit crazy on this one. And yes, I did actually do the video. This, of course, being uh, the Vortex Strike Eagle, being the uh, the four by... Good Lord, I forget how much this thing goes. Uh, four by... Four by 24, I think it is. Yeah, so it's a, it's basically a six times rated scope. But it, it it's too much. Way too much. I actually might go on my uh, AR-10. I don't know. But anyway, so that's just another item. And the funniest damn thing is, of course, you have all this black on black on black on black on black and how badly it contrasts in the light and all. I really think I need to throw way more light on the subject here. Of course, you know, black being completely unforgiving and shadow and contrast and whatnot. You know, it's basically like the, the ink spot that you've dropped more stuff onto and that's all black on black on black on black. But anyway, the, the Vortex Strike Eagle here... And this is here is a not real LaRue 
Uh, I believe it's a SPR 1.5 or something, but it is not the real deal. I, I love the, you know, the little auto lock thing they put on there. And, you know, it's, it's, it's not, okay? So this is yet another case of Chinesium, and it is not the real poop. But it is, yet again, something to experiment with and see how it fits and see if you like it. So I have a knockoff of the LaRue. I have a knockoff of the Knight's Armament. Obviously, if I got both of those in real form, you're probably talking about seven to eight hundred dollars worth of stuff. I mean, you know, you start getting into like the real. Okay, if I was charitable, I could probably get into the Larue for maybe about two seventy. If I was charitable and I looked around for the Knight's Armament, yeah, maybe sub four hundred dollars, but not by much. Ouch! It is real poop, and it costs a lot. Ah, uh, yes, yet another item that you guys won't see that's going to go into the uh, build the lower pile. Why? You don't need to see that yet. We're not building the lower yet. I have told you guys how grossly afflicted I am with knights, armament stuff, and arms, and uh, all these other premium brands. Yeah. This, this to me is like dude crack. Arms. Mm, their stuff is just yummy. Uh, There's another 30 set. Uh, I do have the standoff blocks. I do have the screws. So <sighs> More stuff to play with. <sighs> I can't stop myself. Well, this I probably can show you because this will come in handy. <sighs> this is the shiznit right here. Yes, indeedy. This is the shiznit. Okay, this is an aftermarket build, good quality piece, known as the... Oh, all right, I'll put it in the, uh, the annotations. All right, so what this is is basically a not-as-much-reaction rod made by some other guys, and obviously they basically look at the guys' league reaction rod, and they said, um, it's basically a steel bar, with something to grab onto on the vise, and it basically has the corresponding little nibbies to grab a hold of the barrel extension, and uh, it works. That actually was what I used to crack loose the, the flash hider on the uh, the Delton upper, and this thing works, man. And it also supports it fully. Uh, yes, I know, I do still have this guy. You know, of course, I did put up a video, you know, so th this one still works okay yes i know i'm being lazy i still got the uh, the barrel on there and all but yeah uh so yeah that one still works the video is still up on youtube but this time i'm going to play around with the reaction rod and it's, it's not a reaction rod per se because i think guys they actually trademarked that term so i think they actually use it as a barrel extension uh barrel support you know tool for your m16 ar-15 family weapon system Get yourself one of these guys. And, of course, I'll put the information down in the uh, the video description. You know, where I got it, how much it cost, and obviously, you know, what it's called. Because all these things off the top of my head just doesn't work. <laughs> all right, so uh, I guess we probably should get down to the nuts and bolts of taking apart the mock-up and actually putting it together correctly for the upper. All right, we are back, and I have it broke down in the uh, component pieces uh, don't need the charging handle that can go off to the side. Obviously don't need the, uh, the bolt carrier that can go off to the side as well. Hey, you know what? Assembly on your standard bolt carrier has been covered to death, but if you guys don't know in quick review, okay, you have your bolt carrier. It goes in the ejector is always going to go to the driver's side. The extractor is always going to go to the passenger side, obviously by looking at it from rear view, which is going to be looking at it from the key forward. You then have this little hole here. Don't do anything with that yet. The bolt carrier has the holes drilled in only one way. The cam pin can only go in one way. It's, it has a very, very, very slight taper on it, and it only goes in one way. You stick it in. You turn it 90 degrees. Obviously, you stick in your firing pin, which then holds all these parts together. Then you put in your keeper pin slash cotter pin, and everybody is together. No great rocket science, okay? Lighten versus standard, your bolt carrier group is your bolt carrier group. No great mystery. Obviously, if you're switching out the, uh, the, the latch on your charging handle, you drive out the pin, you drive back in the pin. Yeah, I know I probably you know, went a little 
excessive on it. But you know what? This is going to be hidden stuff, and I don't care. It was a cheap charging handle. If I bugger it up, I'll simply just buy another one. The uh, the tactical latches are like $15, $17. Okay, I got maybe $21 in this whole thing. I'm fine. Okay, so, like I said, standard, generic, possibly Anderson upper, Chinesium polymer, uh, very... It's not very heavy. I mean, it actually has maybe about maybe about 10, 12 ounces of mass, maybe, maybe. But it's it's long and skinny and kind of, you know, unwieldy. That's why it feels maybe heavier than it is. It's very light. So what is going to be the tube of expression to take bullets and put bullet into world? Well, if you're doing a What Would Stoner Do project and you're looking at the way that the, uh, you know, the, the Forgotten Weapon guys did it, they said you only have one name to proceed with and one name only. You can only utilize, well, you should be utilizing. If you're going to build it the way they are, you need a fax on barrel. So I know a guy, I didn't blow a guy, but I know a guy who, uh, actually, I think it was Optics Planet had it on sale. So we have ourselves one spiffy fax on barrel. Popped a little booger off. You can see it's pretty, and it still says, still says fax on. So, good stuff like that there. Uh, now, the twist rate on this barrel is going to be a, there we go, 5.56 five, five, NATO, 1 in 8 sewist. So okay, so that, that's it right there. Have the little nibby guy to pop off the end. Come on. Come on, little nibby guy. Oh, it's being obnoxious. It did not want to get off. All right, so... Do I have that zoomed in? Yes, I do. All right, so you can look at this by contrast of the Delton upper, and you can see this is a very, very thin profile, very much like the uh, the original Colts. It's about as much meat as they can take out, get this thing to still work, and all the good stuff like that there. This is not a 0.75 diameter gas block. Oh, no. You need to have the correct poop. So, and I spec this when I ordered it off of Optics Planet, so I knew I had to get the correct gas block. So this is a 6.25 read a, was a 10th of an inch smaller, 100th of an inch smaller, but it, it, 10th of an inch, I think it is. So 0.75, no, no in, it's 1.25. So basically an eighth of an inch difference, I think. So, you know, uh, 16th on either side. So it's uh, 750, so quarter inch, three quarters of an inch versus 0.625, which was the original configuration of the barrel. The, uh, the U.S. military fattened it up and said they wanted more meat. Uh, so then you have that, you know, weapon by community organizer type of stuff where you look at the, the government profile M16A2 barrel and it basically comes out fairly chunky and then it steps way down underneath the handguard so it has some place for the, uh, the M203 grenade launcher to grab onto. Then it comes up to the front sight base, then it gets fat again to 7 point, uh, point seven, uh, 750, goes underneath the gas block and stays at that fat profile until it finally hits the flash hider. Why? Because that's the Marine Corps spec for that barrel. Ugh, it made no sense whatsoever. Not that many people are going to be the, you know, the grenade guys. That's just not how that one's going to work. Oh, I'm so damn zoomed in. Okay, so anyway. Uh, so I guess componentry-wise, we have to do everything like that there. Uh, obviously, I did order this amazingly enough. I got it off of, you know, Botac. It is the FS, I think it is. So not Sykes Fairborn or Fairborn Sykes or anything. I think it's the FS. So essentially what this guy does is it engages upon the barrel extension. And basically like a uh, universal joint on your car or like the splines on the transmission shaft, it locks in there and does everything it needs to do. So... The best part about it is, is the diameter of this guy is, well, look at that. It's the same diameter as an upper receiver, thus protecting this thing from being torqued, twisted, bent, buggered, or what have you. So let's get to the build. Okay. Incidentally, if you guys don't know what this is, this guy right here is the NC Star Pro Series upper receiver block for the AR-15. That guy that guy okay does the same thing as a reaction rod also has a port for the cleaning rod to go through i did a video it's up on youtube you can watch it at your leisure all right so i just got this thing in my hot little hands man this is uh like one of those cool little things i just saw and i really i couldn't help myself this guy here is a mega die yes this here is a one by three sixteenth by 
16 twist. So what this guy actually does is this is a big honking die. And what does it do? It fits on the buffer tubes. Before you screw them into your lower receiver, you can chase off the threads or you can make sure it's in spec and uh, give this thing a spiff by twisting this guy on and twisting the guy back off. You pretty much can do it by hand, but you know what? If you have a wrench big enough to fit this thing, wow. <laughs> I need. I still need to get the one for the, uh, the, the front threads on the upper receiver because that is a different twist. So uh, we'll move on from that one and uh, move out smartly. All right, so we're going to do this thing uh, quick and dirty here. So basically you have your generic reaction rod. Gets locked into the vise, obviously. You then take your upper receiver. You apply barrel thusly. You do have your standard locating pin right there. So basically no great science. I'm doing this left-handed, but whatever. I'll make it work. Goes in. Reaction rod goodness. Basically just kind of fiddle it about. And it is a very, very secure fit. I mean, you got this guy on there, and it's it's on there. I mean, it's very much on there. All right, so now looking at this Chinesium forearm, that's not going on just yet. We have to apply Mr. Gas Block. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. Uh, typically, what I've found in my own experience is you pretty much just eyeball this thing which way is the gas port which way is your orientation not a great amount of science here uh, but what essentially what you wish to do is you have to locate the gas block upon the gas port obviously at 12 o'clock and just in front of this step here is going to be the gas port which is basically just a hole in the barrel that allows gas to come up get farther back work the action we could do this first but probably should put the barrel nut on so let's just do that first before we go any further and like i said this thing is definitely chinesium okay there's like a cross bolt here and there's a couple of clamp bolts so it's it is <laughs> and definitely the biggest problem is of course right now the the faxon carbon fiber upper is like unbelievably unobtainium. I mean, you know, even considering, you know, you have all the, the classic ammo apocalypse right now and all the rest of that fun stuff, you know, all this stuff right now is just so, so hard to source. I mean, really, it's very, very hard to find in the best of times. So even now, it's very, very, very hard to find. All right, I'm going to cheat like crazy here. I'm going to cheat like crazy. All right, so I've got this guy on there, popped him off. Non-standard barrel nut. It's basically an alloy barrel nut. So I'm going to have to find a wrench that fits this guy and cranks him down accordingly. So give me one second here. I need to find a wrench. All right, so I'm not picky here, man. A wrench is a wrench is a wrench is a wrench. I don't think this thing's really going to care one way or the other, whichever way I go to put some torque on it, as long as I'm applying torque correctly. So... Snuggy, snuggy. Of course, obviously, you know, there is no index marks on here. It's not like anything has to line up. Kind of like your classic, uh, you know, delta ring where you basically have like little slots in there that engages. Obviously, your armorer's wrench, you have all the little teeth there. And of course, you have to have the one hole that lines up perfectly with the top hole of the receiver. This kind of negates that. So, applying torque thusly. And they say, you know, basically you want to apply, release, apply, release. And you know what? I've never really had issues with that. So I'm just going to put mm, about that much. I'm going to say probably that's about maybe 45, 50, maybe even 60 foot pounds. It's on there, okay? It's not going any place now. It's good to go. Now, in terms of finish, that's alloy. The, you know, the barrel's been passivity coated i mean if i could go wild and crazy here i obviously yeah i could be painting all kinds of gack all over it and whatnot not needed not not needed okay just not now conversely we are now on the other side of things i having to put together you know the the obviously the uh the ford assist and the, the dust cover you guys have seen people do that a million times i'm just going to knock that out off camera you know give me a minute here okay basically you put it in you put a pin in the other one you put a pin in you uh 
basically uh, line the dust cover up. You put the spring on there. You make sure the spring's pushing the right way. It's it's not hard, okay? You get the little E-clip. You stick it in there so it doesn't over... It's, it's good, okay? All that stuff is easy. All those videos have been all over the planet. I'm not showing anything new, okay? Stand by one second here. Oh, so you decided to hang out and watch anyway. All right, fine. Roll, pin, punch. It was at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. Oh, you thought I was going to do that without putting it in a fixture? You're crazy. And this guy is snug. Have wood. That way you don't butter stuff. Uh, what did I do this time? There we go. <laughs> Brain farts. All right, now that was just me switching between the Colt receiver and this receiver. Okay, it's not hard, but you probably should be practiced up in the art form. I'm not practiced up in the art form because I really have only played with that NC Star guy like maybe a few times. Reaction rod comes out. Spin this wanker over here. Lock him in place. Right? Good to go? Not quite. Brass. Hammer. Better to wipe off a little brass rather than, you know, bugger something up. Also, the anodizing, eh, it doesn't take too good to abrasion, man. Okay, this guy, basically, you obviously have two sides. You want the claw side facing inboard. And yeah, I know it's shaving a little bit of brass, but you know what? <laughs> Fixed. Okay? Easy peasy. All right, now I got the Mega Smasher here, also known as Mr. Uh, 16 ounce ball penis hammer. Why? Because, well, he's a big boy. Notice that does engage in the roll pin, it's not going to walk away. A standard punch. <sighs> Standard punch is just flat. There's there's nothing going for you, man. You could walk off and you could bugger everything up. Don't do that. Roll, pin, punch. Slightly below the surface. You're done, man. Buy yourself a set of these. Seriously. This is actually a set from Sears, believe it or not. This is actually a Craftsman set of roll pin punches. And I've, I've been rocking these things for the longest damn time. Get roll pin punches, especially when you're wrenching on uh, AR-15 stuff. You will bugger your stuff. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Okay, all right, so you guys think I don't have regular punches, all right? I, I went to Harbor Freight, and I got a selection of punches, okay? Itty bitties going down to 16th, and you know, all those, I do not trust doing this, okay? Roll pin punches, just get them. All right, dust cover time. These things can be a little bit of a pain in the ass, you know? They really can. 
Uh, obviously, you have your itty bitty, itty bitty, itty bitty eclipse. Did I mention they're itty bitty? All right, I, I said I was going to do it off camera, but I'll, I'll do it on camera, all right? So essentially, the hardest way to do this thing is you essentially just put it on there, find a hard surface, and just... Oh! Oh! Hurt me hard to click. Yeah, so that, that, that's the, the hardest way to do the eclipse on these guys, all right? Goes from front to back. Give me one second here. Obviously, you got to get your orientation right, okay? The long leg goes on the dust cover, okay? It does not go on the receiver. So basically, you want to have this orientation. So easiest way I've found to do this, <sighs> it's really kind of a pain in the ass. But the easiest way I've found to do this is you essentially stick the guy in, you wind up the spring, and then you stick it in and play with it and all the rest of the fun stuff like that. It's annoying. Uh, again, I'm going to try to do this maybe on or off camera. I haven't decided yet. Give me a minute. All right, I lied. I'm going to do it on camera. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh I didn't realize the barrel nuts in the way. All right, well, repeat procedure. Uh, these are the obnoxious things in your neighborhood. In your neighborhood. In your neighborhood. Oh, these are the obnoxious things in your neighborhood. Uh, stand over there. Like I said, you know, anytime you go online, uh, actually, I didn't say, but anytime you go online and you start piecing together a whole bunch of different things, you never know what you're going to flip and get until you start sticking stuff together and then you realize, hey, it didn't work out quite the way I thought it was going to. No, it probably didn't because you're sticking stuff together from how many different vendors? Eh, so annoying. All right, so what I normally do is I'll twist this guy up a bunch of times, read like one time, and then stick it in, get completely frustrated about 15 effing times when it pops apart 50 times yeah so that's just uh, the fun stuff on that one okay so let me get this thing all put together uh full fumble futz and all the rest of the good stuff like that there and when i get it back together i'll, I'll fire the camera up again okay i, I just don't want to do this like everything's going doing you know frustration factor and all the rest of the fun stuff like that there you've seen people do this before okay give me a sec all right truth be told i'm not above using a pair of pliers Doing number one. Doing number two. Doing number three. Now, to know if you got it right, is you simply just go and try it out to see if it works or if it's too low a tension, okay? that That's not near enough tension, so I'm going to have to... Watch with it again. All right, barrel, you're coming out. You're coming out. You're you're uh, you're a great barrel and all, but you're in my way. Dag nabbit, we're gonna do it again. Blanket, we're gonna do it again. And things suck. So annoying. So 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 annoying. Uh, all right. Now I, I can't tell you the number of times I've done this, like you know, six and seven times in a row. And it's just been a absolute mm, puppy mother. Now that's being exceedingly polite when you know what I normally would be saying to it, but it is what it is. And it is always a wrestling match. Always is a wrestling match. I've seen people do it with like you know two and three pliers before. That's one way to do it. <sighs> The other one is lock a pair of hemostats on there and spin it a bunch of times and, you know. Uh. And then there's always the other way you can do it is just simply just wind everybody up like such, you know, a bunch of times and then you stick the rope. I'm going to futz around with this thing and, you know, by the time I get it done, I'll be done. You've seen it before. It's frustrating.
You know, I, I'm going to apply a little bit of uh, love to this thing. Just be on the safe side. You know, CLP, nothing crazy. Just a little bit of CLP. And I'm just going to be nice to it. So a little bit of lubrication. Should have probably done that before I messed with this thing, but oh well. Good stuff like that there. Mr. Barrel Nut, back on again. And I'm not going to put funnel torque on this. I am going to put the reaction rod back in there because I know this NC Star is cool and all, but I want to put lateral force on this just to see what I get. All right, so good stuff like that there. Snuggy, snuggy. And the thing is also, I really didn't go crazy with these uh, these cross bolts in this thing. I mean, it, it pretty much is just, you know, it's it's snug. It's not really, like, ridiculously tight. And it still didn't budge. I mean, this NC Star is actually a really decent unit. I'm dropping stuff. It's really a decent unit for, like, about 40 bucks. The reaction rod, I think, was closer to, like, eh, I want to charitably say 60-ish. But the uh, the Geisley unit is, like, 100 Maybe, maybe the, uh, it was less. I gotta look at my Bowtack receipt and I'll let you guys know. The back pin is unbelievably snug compared to the front pin. I don't know, I don't know why that is, but that's just how that is. All right, so that guy's all apart. Quick function check. Uh, hmm, what's going on here? Oh, I had to break it in. <laughs> All right, quick function check. Charging handles in. Bolt carrier. Looks like a worker to me. It is a little snug. I mean, it, it's going to obviously need to break in, but, you know... Fussing around with this thing in front of the TV one night, and it'll be just fine. If I really want to go wild and crazy, I could actually chase that out a little bit with a uh, a punch or a file. You know what? I might actually do that. It might actually just, like, dislodge some metal just to make it a little bit easier, because it looks like that might actually be, like, a blem situation. Uh, like, they didn't open that up. But you know what? In the course of just jacking with this thing, it, it'll figure things out. You know, it'll, it'll find a home. Trust me. That's a, a steel riding surface on an alloy riding surface, and one's going to give up to the other. Trust me on that one. Okay, bolt carrier comes out. Charging handle comes out. I uh, need my reaction rod back in. Stand by one sec. And it really is a little snuggy on this Colt. I don't know why that is. It's always been, it's always been tight. Pin. Other screw. Other cross pin. Wow, it, it's it's always been a little bit snug. I don't know why that is. I think that's just you know how stuff works. Wow, that's really snuggy. Okay, well, loosen him up. I'll just reverse the pins and see who's who and what's what. Maybe they might actually have a little meeting of the minds there. I don't know. But this, this Colt has always been snug in this fixture. I don't know why that is. Okay, he's home there. And notice, I am just using a piece of wood here, so I'm not like, I'm not railing on this thing with a ball peen hammer or anything crazy like that. And I, all I did was just loosen these guys up, okay? So they're they're back on like Donkey Kong. Uh, this fixture has taken minimal wear being in the vice number of times. It's got, you know, pretty pretty hard anodizing. Obviously, it does have a couple of bite marks, because this is a really aggressive jaw uh, vice. 
right, so that guy's back together. Uh, what do we got to do now? Oh, reaction rod. All right, let me replace my camera angle here, and I'll be right back. I just want to see your reaction. Yeah. Okay. You come back in there. And it really, it really, really is a nice fit. I mean, it's like, it actually, it actually opened. Wow, that's funny. I didn't think it would do that. It deployed the dust cover. That's cool. Uh, the other thing that's really kind of cool about this reaction rod is you can clock your angle of service. So any place that you have locking lugs occur, you know, I think it's like every 15, 20 degrees or something like that. Might, might be 45, but yeah, it's like every 45 degrees. Yeah, so that's, that's 90, that's 45 more, that's 180, 270, right there is 270, and uh, 360. So basically you see you can, you can clock at each 45 degrees according to the locking lugs. And of course you can't close your dust cover because you're not committed. All right, so notice I did not lube up this barrel nut. I simply just threw it on there. Uh, dissimilar metals. Obviously, one's going to hang on the other one pretty good. Again, like 55, 60 foot pounds. I, I know the specs are like all over the map. They say anywhere between 35 to 55 or 65 to 75. And I just tend to go about like 50, 60. And I have yet to have an issue. I've never had a situation where I couldn't bust apart an upper receiver after I was done doing a wrench on it. And it never, ever comes loose. Everything is just completely on her the way it should be. So uh, let's move out smartly. All right. Now, uh, obviously, we have our uh, front gas guy here. Uh, we're going to need to find orientation for the gas port, which is closer to this side versus this side. So obviously, that means it's going to go on with that orientation right there. I didn't even show that on camera, did I? Oops. Okay, so obviously you have Mr. Gasport. See? Mr. Gasport right there. You don't believe me? That is a hole. Let me find Mr. Proby. Uh, here we go. Here's Mr. Proby. I am drilling a hole in a barrel. If I could drill a hole in a barrel. All right, so basically that's our gas port right there. Conversely, on the front uh, gas block guy here. So basically we have, not front sight base, but front, you know, the gas block. We have, of course, a corresponding hole for the gas action going on right there. So that's literally, it's a little dark, so it's a little hard to see. Wish I could get better camera angle on that lighting source here. And let's just make this official. Yeah, hopefully you guys are seeing that now. So that guy right there, that is going to be Mr. Gas port. So now I know those guys are like, well, you can always draw a line this way. You can draw a line that way. You can just that and the other thing. Dude, this is this is facts on stuff on facts on stuff. If they're not gonna get their own stuff right on their own stuff, something is really, really, really wrong. Okay? So what do I want to do here? Well, in a perfect world, what I would say is I'd like to have a straight edge. Let me zoom back out. In a perfect world, what I would like to say is I'd like to have a straight edge where I can go from this to this and know for a fact I'm square on. Now, um, what would be the other alternative? Well, right there. Put that guy on there. My uh, my receiver is actually very, very square. I mean, the bubble's like dead set. So, conversely, uh, if I was to go like this... I'm pretty close. I'm actually really, really close. Now, what I could do is I could tighten up the set screws. Let me zip on over here. I, I could tighten up the set screws and basically, you know, give it specs and see who's who and what's what and make sure everything's square on. Uh, I think that's probably going to be what I'm going to do is I'm simply just going to, you know, level everything up as much as possible. And I think this is actually a flat surface on the bottom. So what I could do is I could basically just put it on the barrel Put the level on the receiver, you know, make sure everybody is, you know, not a half bubble out of plumb, but everybody's all squared up. I think that's what I'm going to do. Because if this thing is just like, you know, a RCH or a red coochie hair, or if you're a red coochie hair out of spec with one of these guys, 
you're still going to get plenty of gas, man. That's not even going to be an issue. So I think what we're going to do here is um, I think we're going to basically flip this receiver over 180, get a level spec off of it, and get a level spec off of this, and then square them up, tighten them down. So let's do that right now. Do 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 upside downy do 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 upside downy. All right, so um, obviously on a receiver you have you know milled surfaces, so that's not going to be an issue. Put that guy there. It is just an RCH leaning over one way versus the other. So conversely. If I go over to this and if I go over to this and I do that same measurement, it should be pretty close. I'm, I'm going to kill the camera real quick and basically grab a uh, 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 an Allen wrench and go back and forth and tweak tune and you know fault with it and eh, be anal. All right, so let me do that real quick and then I'll uh, I'll get back on camera. Give me one sec. You know, essentially what we got to do here is we got to figure out some way to put some good sound effects in this thing. That's bubbled up and see where's this guy you know I, I think i'm gonna pull these other two 330 seconds out of here and we'll just we'll throw them in when i'm uh done futzing with this thing do 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 all right let's see here all right so basically got that there I think that's pretty square there. All right, all right, all right, all right. I didn't intend to record this, but all right. So we're we're bubbled up there, you know, squared up. Come over here. It's looking it's looking pretty close. I'm I'm really not going to worry about being like you know a couple degrees off of plum because this guy should just work fine irregardless. I mean. It's their stuff with their stuff. I mean, if I was using like three or four different guys' brands of stuff, you know, I'd be really, really, really concerned. But it's their products. So I'm just going to go with that. And I, I know those guys are going to be like, well, dude, you should be using Loctite. Yeah. Um, you know what? If it comes apart, I'm in trouble. I'm already in trouble. Uh, I could actually just drive these guys in. And then what I could do is I could take a punch and I could peen them, kind of like you know when you basically do the uh, uh, the classic one on the uh, on the, uh, the the bolt carrier groups where you basically peen over the screws to keep the, the you know the gas key screws from doing. I might do that. I mean that, that's really really not hard to do. Upset some metal in there to keep them from unscrewing. Uh, I don't know if that's really going to be a major issue though. I mean it's just it is what it is. Okay, also, conversely, we probably need to do some more, you know, tuning and turning and playing around with. So, let me pause one second here and I'll grab some more parts. Okay, those of you who are the astute observers will note this is not a carbine length gas tube upper. Oh, no. This is going to be a medium length gas tube. Obviously, you know, you guys can say, oh, whoa, how do you know the difference? Well, obviously, you have rifle length versus medium length versus carbine length. So, what is that? 15 inches versus 12 inches versus 7 or 9 inches, something along those lines. But all these guys are one of those things you really, truly need to pay attention to, okay? Because it'll mess you up. So, um, we now have ourselves a new, 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 new spiffy uh, mid-length. So let me get that guy in place and uh, move us smartly. All right, so we got some stuff. 
use the roll pin punches, please, please. All right, our brass hammer yet again, a holding device. All right, this guy right here, not needed for the moment, Mr. Reaction Rod. You can go and hide over there. All right, so obviously you're trying to take a bitty pin. You're trying to stick it in here. Obviously, you're trying to stick something else in there to make everybody happy. Don't frustrate yourself, okay? Line everything up before you stick the Fakaka Duty pin in there. Seriously, man. You're, you're just going to make your life suck. Obviously, this hole right here is going to be what is going to be sucking air that away. So, first off, introduce him to your receiver. Back, 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 back. And then line him up on the hole, okay? Not rocket science, but you do have to sometimes fiddle and futz and, you know, mess around a little bit. But yeah, it's not any great science here, okay? So if you do the classic... You know, look through the whole thing. Uh, let's see if I can't line it up on camera here. See, it's like it's like flickering a little bit when you line things up. That's all you got to do. Uh, Mr. Pin. And, and they are kind of bitty, so if you drop them, make sure you got spares. I mean, you're going to lose a bazillion of these stupid things. And that's, that's one of the major, only huge detractors to the AR-15 firearms family, is you better have the oops kit. What's an oops kit? Oh, that's the stuff that you're cussing like a sailor, going, I just lost a Fakaka duty thing, oops! Yeah, that's an oops kit. Okay, so essentially, basically just line this booger on up. Hang on one second here, I need my peepers. Lead that, line that sucker on up. It's really a lot easier if you're hanging on to it with a pair of pliers, trust me. So, uh, I'm going to have to futz around with this a little bit and get everybody lined up, so give me one second here. All right, if you guys want the live action demo, here we go. Essentially, all it does is it basically just goes into the hole. It goes into the hole. That's it. And you fill the futz, get everybody all lined up, and then he's locked in place. Okay? No great science there. I just got to get it all lined up and... It's like patting your head, rubbing your stomach, and trying to make everybody all line up all at once. So, <clears throat> all right. So let me get back into it and give me one second. Uh, there's always your classic trick. You take another punch, and you basically just you know line it up in there and make sure everybody is you know correctly in the hole. So you can always do that like kind of like Wally thing. Basically, make everybody's all lined up. It's kind of hard, man. You almost need like you know like a wood surface to line it up on, or you need those proper fixtures, which I don't have. But I'm cheating with a pair of pliers. All right, I forgot the cardinal rule of uh, most firearms manufacturer. From right to left. Or from left to right. <laughs> Being dyslexic, I completely botched it up. But that's all right. I, I chased the roll pin off. And uh, everybody's happy again. So let me drive him home. A couple more uh, deft taps. Did I mention roll pin punch? Roll pin punch. That's why you don't bodger your stuff. Any little marks that I put in there, yeah, it's just, it's underneath the, the handguard, but always right to left. <laughs> it might be like a slight taper in there or something. I, I don't know. Anyway, I got it in there. Gas tube's in place. Uh, let's just do a quick function check while we're at it, okay? So let's see here. Do, 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 do. Mr. Uh, charging handle. Obviously, he he still works. Mr. Dust cover, he still works. Obviously, Mr. Uh, bolt carrier, he's he's not doing anything different than what he was already doing, which is pretty much sitting on the side. So uh, let's just do something wild and crazy here, okay? Let's go like this, and. Okay, there's limited four to assist notches, but there is a couple there, and it did actually kind of do something, so good stuff like that there. All right, so go like such, go like this, go like that. Everybody's home. Pulley, 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 pulley. It is a little stiff, you know, pulling it open. 
Uh, I think that dust cover just might need a little bit of massaging, but it does function. I mean, you know, obviously, if you fired it, it would definitely pop it open. It would definitely eject. All right, so let's proceed further here. Um, hmm. I guess I'll just do the uh, reaction rod again, just to make things easy. Stand by one. And it, it really is just that easy to set this thing up, man. It's, it's just painless. All right, so... Conversely, bolt carrier, charging handle, GAT. Okay, so it, it's on there. No great science, no great mystery. Um, I guess we probably should just put the, the handguard on there and be done with it. Oh, wait a minute. Is there something else I need to put on? Yeah, let's put the handguard on first. Then, then, I'll, then I'll go with this. Okay, so... The other thing too is all you notice it's got these two little nubbies here which engage the flats on the uh, the upper receiver so it's not it's really not going to go anywhere it's on there okay so all right flip 180 out and this thing really truly does make life easy man i gotta tell you uh, having the reaction rod is really just very very dead simple man it, it really really makes life easy all right so you do have this kind of strange looking little nut here and obviously an allen screw and uh let me get over and eyeball this thing up close and personal i think the uh the angle is obviously going to go out so it conforms to the rest of the handguard and an allen wrench I got a long one here, which makes life easy. Do a little action shot for you guys. All right, so that's that, that's pretty much knocked out, but there is a issue. All right, so we're back, and uh, it's looking basically built, except for one itty bitty slight issue, and that issue is called <whistles> stubby. Yeah, it's just a a tad stubby here. So I, what I'm actually trying to do here is I'm trying to take in the contrast and respect that I know have not enough muzzle sticking out. I mean, obviously, this is a 16-inch barrel with a 16-inch end, so you can see there's not a whole heck of a lot sticking out beyond there. So what would I intend to do to take care of this issue? I'm coming up short. <laughs> not, not intentionally, but I'm coming up short. All right, well, you would tend to think that probably I should put a standard flash hider on there okay well let's just see here you know your standard flash hider this one of course being some mock-up thing but all these holes and jets and whatnot it is gonna well if nothing else it's just gonna carbon the crap out of that what would you tend to think would be uh well a fix well i would tend to think something along the lines of maybe like oh i don't know like a linear compensator or some other means of putting everything straight out the front well you could also do this, and I'm taking it out of the package for the very, 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 very first time. It is a non-index needed, very simple to utilize, very ready to go, KAK Industries half by 28 Slimline Micro Flash Can. Ain't that cute? Yeah, I think that's going to do quite nicely, so this is... Wind that little booger on her. Now, obviously, I do need to torque this guy down, so I'm, I might not be able to reach this. I might actually have to take the handguard back off again. But, or I can, ah, I could do that too. Let me, let me find something that fits in the slots. Does this fit? 
Why, yes. Yes, it does. And it is a Craftsman screwdriver. And that's that's on there now. Got a little got a little flex on the uh, the handle there. So let's see what we got here. Man, that reaction rod is just a snug fit. You can actually see like bearing surface. Might, I might actually chase that down. I might actually chase that down a little bit. I don't know if it really shows on camera, but there's almost like a slight ring there where it's kind of like maybe being just a little bit nasty inside the receiver. But let's just go with the build here. So. Final assembly of the APA. There we go. All right, so this essentially right here is my iteration of the What Would Stoner Do Upper. Now, how is the weight on this thing? Uh, it's like, well, you got to remember, most of the weight of an AR-15 is the upper receiver. So... In terms of actual weight, it feels like about mm, like three pounds or so. Uh, this is an alloy uh, cat can. It's, it's not steel. So basically everything I could do to take weight off, I did. I know, I know the, the, the other thing too is also, you know, the What Would Stoner Do uh, for, Forgotten Weapons guys. I mean, they used a zero real estate upper. So there is no brass deflector. There is no forward, uh, you know, uh, bolt assist or anything like that you know actually I think they even negated to have a uh, dust cover on there so literally all this stuff all this stuff maybe maybe is another three four ounces at best so this is not as light as they came up with but is it as light as something I'm gonna come up with, come up with right now uh, during ammo apocalypse and you know gun apocalypse yes this this is about as light as I'm gonna get short of doing something really ridiculously crazy now sighting options what could i possibly throw in here that is going to be not too terrible heavy well that's probably going to be in the next part of this video so we're going to put a pin in this right now and come back to it later so right now this is the upper build fully completed and uh this will be part one of the what would stoner do project for the what would dude do i commend it to you all right, so I'll put in there all the information for like, you know, like components and obviously where to source the reaction rod and all the good stuff like that there. I know my camera rock's not 100%, but I did put it together. And I, I did it with minimal amount of boo-boos, so good stuff on that one. Uh, eat good tip, tongue ring as always, always, you know what you love it. Part one of the What Would Do Do project. Not sponsored by or not in partnership with Forgotten Weapons, but I'm going to give those guys full and absolute credit because they... Were the reason why I actually wanted to build this upper. So, their iteration looked b badass. Me, uh, I'm making do with me being budget guy and kind of using some of the parts. Can't go wrong with facts on. Good stuff. See you guys and uh, have a good one.